Now, some people have great coping mechanisms, meditation, prayer, relaxation. Some of us, we have terrible habits. We don't want to get out of bed. We feel like things are not worth it. You get really angry again and you're just going back and forth with these emotional states and you're not regulated. Optimal performance, that's when you have the best decision making, where you're somewhat anxious, but you're not too anxious. Hello everyone and welcome to today's course. And today we're gonna go through symptoms of undischarged stress, how to deal with stress. We deal with stress on a daily level, from relationships to finances, to your own character sometimes. You don't even like who you are. How do we get the stress, we bring it in, how do we discharge it and remove it and push it out of our system? This is what we're gonna go through today. I'm gonna to show you a really cool schematic that gives you an understanding of what is hyper arousal, what is it that when we're really uptight and we're really charged? And what is hypo arousal? What is it that when we need motivation actually to go through the day? We're just feeling a little bit lethargic. We're feeling a little lazy. We're going to give you an understanding today of how this stuff works. And the best thing about this, guys, is I'm going to show you where optimal performance sit. What do people who are in optimal mode, what do they do and how do they regulate this? That's what we're going to find out. So if you want to become a top performer, I'm going to show you how to do that and where optimal performance sits. So here we go. Let's go through the course and then we'll set it up from there. So the first thing I want you to understand is this. I want you to understand there's something called your normal zone where we're usually at all the time from zero to ten. And we're going to call this this little blue zone right here. This is when we are just in normal zone. We're not charged. We, we don't need to discharge either. We're not feeling lazy and we're not feeling overly angry. So this here is going to give us the base work of what we're going to understand how stress works. Second thing I want you to really think about is this. This is the fluctuation right here. Watch this line. So sometimes we go in here, as long as we stay in here and see these arrows, this is red, so we're kind of going up, okay? We're, we're getting a little more angry, okay? We're getting a little more anxious. This here is like, okay, we're going down, we're cooling off. We're feeling a little more relaxed. This, it goes back up again, but as long as we stay within this range of 10, we should be good, okay? But what happens when something unexpected happens. You get a ticket. You go home and you see someone that you don't like. So now, what happens when that traumatic event happens? And let's say it starts to mess with us and we get overly charged. Does it bring us out of this normal zone that we're talking about? Let's see. Now what happens is you get into hyper arousal. So whatever stressor has caused this, has brought you to such a point that now you're starting to come out of your zone a little bit here. You go a little bit further where you come back down. Now you're not feeling so well. You're feeling a little down, a little depressed. You go back up and you're, you think about it again. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe she did this. I can't believe he did that. It's unbelievable how people are. But look at what's happening to your system. You're becoming a little more negative. And now you've bottom out again. Okay, but see how you're coming out of the zone way out here. And then you go back up top, you get really angry again, and you're just going back and forth with these emotional states. And you're not regulated. You're trying to regulate yourself, but you can't do it. So now you stay here for a little longer, and you're still really thinking about the event. You're really mad. Everything is just doesn't feel right. You feel a little sad. Then you go back down all the way, and you stay here down here as well. So then you go back up and it's just, it continues and see how this wave is just getting longer and longer and longer. And you're staying up here longer. You're staying down here in depression mode a little bit longer and anger mode a little bit longer. So you begin to see how a stressful event has caused your whole internal system. The fight or flight system has activated this traumatic event, whatever it is, has caused your system to kind of go haywire and you need to regulate. 
let's go to the next thing. And we talked a little bit about hyperarousal, correct? So now whenever you're up here, you're actually in hyperarousal mode. Your, your system is on. The fight or flight system is on. Now, what does that cause? That causes this, anxiety, panic. Look at all these as you go along, restlessness, hypervigilance, okay, digestive problems, emotional flooding, chronic pain. See how all these things begin to activate, even hostility and rage because you're up here. This is when we feel really mad, really angry. We're blaming the world. We're blaming people. We're blaming situations. That's how it works. So now let's see what happens if you actually get stuck in this mode. You get stuck on, on. You're constantly active. This is where you can't relax. When you're trying to go to sleep at night, you won't be able to. You've got intrusive thoughts that are constantly in your head. Why? Because the system has activated to a whole nother level, but it's stuck on, on. You cannot relax. You cannot remove the stress. Okay, there's ways to actually cope now. Now, some people have great coping mechanisms when this is on and they can actually shut down the system and relax. Meditation, prayer, relaxation, they have great mechanisms how to shut down. Some of us, we have terrible habits and we go towards alcohol. We're trying to discharge, but we can't. I'm gonna show you what are great mechanisms to discharge a little bit later, and then I'm gonna show you what are not so good mechanisms when you are actually trying to discharge stress. I'm gonna give you these things, I'm gonna give you a list top, middle, and bottom like recovery systems and coping mechanisms that people use. Now, let's move on here. What happens when we are hypo-aroused? I'm going to give you a list of things that you to look for when you're hypo-aroused, and let's see what that is. Depression, okay, flat affect. You can see how this goes along, guys, okay, disconnection, a disassociation, all these low blood pressure pain. Again, what happens here? If we get stuck in off mode, the system has shut down too much and we don't have motivation. We don't want to get out of bed. We don't want to do anything. We feel completely okay, unable. We feel helpless. We feel like things are not worth my effort, my time, and I just feel this weight, this emotional weight that's on me that I cannot move, but it's mental weight. It's not physical weight, no one's holding you down, but mental weight is much heavier than physical weight, guys. So look at all these symptoms that we may feel when we're stuck on off. Now you understand what hyperarousal is, okay, when we're stuck on on, and now you understand what hypoarousal is when we're stuck on off, and some of the symptoms that we may feel on both sides. Now. Where does optimal performance sit? Where? This is crucial, okay? This is crucial. This is what we need to understand and where we need to be. Do you guys think it's down here, up here? Where does it sit, okay? Should I have this wave of, you know, craziness? Some, some of us really get uh, blameful. We start blaming the world. We start doing a million other things and we don't want to take responsibility. And some of us just go into depression mode and we don't want to do anything about the, what's going on. We just feel completely helpless. Now, where does optimal performance sit on this scale? Let's find out. So now watch this. This is so cool. Optimal performance is actually right in the middle. That's when you have the best decision making where you're somewhat anxious but you're not too anxious. You're somewhat relaxed, but not too relaxed. Okay, so you're somewhat right in the middle. The system is on, but it's not on to where it brings you out of this zone, okay? Where it's just, you can fluctuate, but you don't go up down too much. So you wanna stay about an average of around five. Now, why is this so important? Because now you're just in where you feel enough hope that you can accomplish your goal and you're actually ambitious to move towards it, where you have energy to move forward and, and you have enough fear that is behind you that's actually also pushing you forward. So your hope is actually pulling you forward, which is in front of you, and your fear is actually pushing you forward, which is behind you. When you're like that, now you have the ultimate form of motivation. You have hope working in the right way and you have fear working in the right way.
and I'll give you a little example. They took some mice and they starved them. They didn't allow them to have food in terms of about 75% of starvation. Now what happens, they put the cheese at the end of the actual maze and they allowed the mouse to actually go. They put some resistance on the mouse in terms of a spring, but they wanted to see how fast it would actually go through the maze. And it did it in a appointed time. And they measured that. Then afterwards, what they did, they did the exact same thing with the starvation, with the piece of cheese, but then they put a scent of a cat behind the mouse. And it went much, much faster. So you want your fear behind you and you want your hope in front of you. And this is how you attain optimal performance. So you don't want to be overly charged and you want, don't want to be under charge in terms of your battery. You want to be right in the middle and that's where you have the ability to see clearly. You have ability to have your creativity on where you can approach the right things and avoid the wrong things. All right, guys, now you understand where optimal performance sits. And if you want more to understand all the coping mechanisms, what are some of the studies that have been done to show resiliency? And I'm going to show you all that in the course. So to take this course, go to wissambazi.com and I will see you there. <music>